two, two. Okay, and um, welcome back to Quinn's Candidates 2012. You're probably sick of hearing me say that, so let's move on with the Societies and Services Officer candidates. These are popular, these are popular candidates. We have Tom Gifford, Owen Harries, Josh Heyman, Martha Kiff, Steve Ralph, Hamish Simmy, and Dave Mr. T. Townsend. Okay, as with every other position, you get two minutes to uh, put yourself forward to the audience to decide why you should be the next Societies and Services Officer. After that, there will be a round of three questions of which you will have one minute each to answer the questions. Uh, it goes in alphabetical order, so at first for two minutes we have Tom Gifford. Yeah, um, hi everyone. Um, I know I'll try and keep it short and sweet. There's a billion candidates, and you've all got lives to live and stuff, so it's all cool. Um, just basically three things to do if you vote for Tom for Societies and Services. Uh, first of all, I completely renovate Divas, uh, increase the capacity and sort out the dreadful queue. Um, at the moment, it just sort of looks like a throwback to the 1980s. Uh, secondly, I lead a campaign to sort of the ridiculous pricing at the student union spa stores. As students, we're used to having things cheap. Uh, and if SPA have the monopoly on student union uh, retail services, they better justify it. And while I'm on the me um, message of SPA as well, there's a lot of talk about SPA moving um, around Fulton House. If it does, I'll make sure that the, uh, the previous SPA store will be saved for society, social activities only, and nothing else. But what's most important about the role of a Societies and Services Officer is to remember that you are elected to represent students. And if you need to come and see me about anything, uh, I'll be clear about when I'm in the office, and I'm at the, always at the other end of the phone uh, in the day or night. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, up next, two minutes, Owain Harries, go. Hi, Hi up. My name is Owen Harris and I'm running to be your Societies and Services Officer. I am your typical West Whalian, passionate, hardworking and loud. Three key skills needed to represent students at senior manager meetings and to ensure societies reach their full potential. I have worked with all sorts of societies over the years. My two years in the Welsh Society Committee has seen a small 15 person society grow 150 strong and I have worked with student media be it commentating the rugby and varsity or editing the intramural football and Welsh pages in the waterfront. My pledges are simple and doable. I am your smart candidate. Smartphone application, society events, union news, deals in bars and shops. It's the easiest way to know more than ever about what is going on in your union. Massive inter-society events. The success of the Multicultural Week shows societies can work well together whilst remaining as a unique presence. I will ensure funding for inter-society events is given. Advertising. Get promoted out of the union building and across campus. I will fight tooth and nail with senior management for visible poster points across campus. What would you rather see? Receiving the ultimate student experience or seeing a pretty marble building in a way to lectures? Renovation. Things are going to be moving and space is going to be available. I don't want to see any more offices. I want to see rooms being used by students. I will ensure a student hub is created and prioritised for society activities. T is for travel shop. The travel shop isn't well known among students. Creating an online travel shop will ensure that we reach all students than ever before. It will also ensure more income going back into non-commercial services which are essential to a lot of students such as the advice centre and nursery. I'm not going to mess about. Vote O Y number one. Your smart candidate. Diolch <laughs> Okay, thank you, Owen. Next up, Josh Heyman. You have two minutes. Hello. It's a bit weird being this side of the microphone. I used to be down there pushing the buttons. Um, I want to start off with telling you why I think I'm the most credible candidate to be your Society and Services Officer. Over the last year or so, I've worked very hard and I've been very dedicated 
in the Students' Union. I've been on society committees for Extreme Radio and RAG, as well as being involved in countless societies and different activities. From working for the Students' Union, I believe that I've accrued the knowledge and the experience to know how things work and how societies work. I've already built a vast majority of good relationships with the staff in the Students' Union, as well as in the university. And I think that when it comes to doing the day job um, day to day, I think that I'm the best qualified candidate. As far as my manifesto goes, it's been quite a popular idea so far about Divas. I want to turn it into not just a nightclub. Divas has become a society space that's used by a vast majority of societies, and it's just not adequate enough. Better lighting, better sound, and definitely improving the toilets. On terms, as well as with Divas, um, over the exam period, there's quite a lot of noise complaints from Penmai and other halls. Proposed to have a silent disco in Tutors and OMG over the exam period to stop those noise complaints and still allow students that want to go out the ability to. My third and most important one is about a student job fair. Coming to university in my first year, the only way I got a job was because I worked at Starbucks at home and I just transferred store. It's a very difficult to come to university as a first year if you've got no experience working to get a job. I propose that in Freshers Week up in Dining Room A, we hold a student job fair, inviting SU employers, as well as local businesses, cafes, restaurants, bars that would want to employ students to give you the ability and to make it much easier to find a part-time job. If you like what I've got to say, vote Josh Heyman number one for Societies and Services. Okay, thank you very much, Josh. And uh, next up we have Martha Kiff. Martha, you have two minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Martha, and I'm running to be your Societies and Services Officer. In my three years at Swansea University, I've been President and Secretary of the Musician Society, Treasurer of the Genetic Society, and Duties Officer of St. John Links. These three years have been the best of my life, and I want next year to be spent making your experience as great as mine was. My responsibilities and experiences as a society and committee member have taught me what it means to run and be part of a society, and they will enable me to make a difference. If elected, I will improve communications between societies and ends to provide venues and deals as well as having a better booking system. Socials are an important part of society life and I would do everything I could to make them as fun and as stress-free as possible. I would encourage more into society events and a bi-monthly societies evening. Working with other societies provides an even greater experience for your society members and I want to make this as easy as possible for you. After the success of Give It A Go week in January, I would have another one after Freshers' Fair in September so that you could try out the societies you want to join before you commit. So remember, vote me for communication, support, and a great experience. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Martha. Uh, up next, we have Steve Ralph. Steve, you have two minutes. Hello, I'm Steve. I'm running to be your Societies and Services Officer. I'm standing in, in these elections for several reasons. The main one is for my love of this union and this university. From the first year I got involved with the Student Residence Committee, I was the first Woodside president. From then, in the next year, I went on to become the event secretary for the English Society, which in that year won Best New Society. I'm not saying they're related. I've seen how difficult it can be for a new society to become fully functional with everyone involved working well. There are problems with societies, whether they feel they have been treated unfairly or have logistical troubles. I want to create something that means that committee members can express any issue to do with their society. This would also be a place for services to bring up any issue that they believe that is important to them. My main driving force is people. We publicize little about the actual people behind our societies and services. Even with our executive, we don't praise them enough for everything that they do. They do events, they raise awareness as well as service drinks or work, work in our spas. Our website is good, however, we are lagging behind. Other unions have twit feeds for their full-time officers, as well as informal videos about what their officers do, random facts about them. We need to connect our actual officers with the people they represent in an even stronger way than we already do. Speaking of our website, and we, need to down, we need to have downloadable forms so that we can have room requisition, so we don't have to go to the office every time. Yes, we need to get things signed, but we don't need to go running backwards and forwards. On top of that, I want to implement a calendar which involves every event and thing going on. 
vote for me because I'm going to bring societies and this union up to date. Thank you, Steve. Uh, up next, we have Hamish Simi. Hamish, you have two minutes. Hi, I'm Hamish Simi, and I'm running to be your Societies and Services Officer. I'd like to start by saying a little bit about myself. I'm a third-year geography student, and I'm living in Bryn Mill, but I'm originally from Oxford. In my time here, I've been a regular user of the available Societies and Services on campus. On the whole, I'm pleased with the provision of services, but I'm aware of some of the issues. I belong to many societies and have partaken in the Intramural Football League for two years. I enjoy a sense of belonging that comes from being part of a team or society. Geography was a great way of meeting like-minded people, and it also offered a great sense of stability in an otherwise hectic university life. So what am I hoping to do with societies? I want to promote the benefit of joining societies as a fundamental part of the university experience. There's social and educational values to be gained from societies, and responsibilities and organisational skills that will look great on a CV. I also want to facilitate an easier way to get new societies up and running from pen and paper. What am I hoping to do with services? Well, as I said, on the whole, they're pretty good, but there are certain issues. What I'm looking to do is act on behalf of the students rather than reflect my own opinions and values. Vote for Hamish Simi. What's the worst that could happen? Thank you, Hamish. And finally, our last candidate, Dave, Mr. T, Townsend. What's up? Damn, there we go. First of all, quick one, just want to thank the waterfront. Yesterday, after my lot tried to put a banner in the tree, uh, you caught some Muppet trying to kill, uh, steal bikes. Well done. Right, round of applause. All right, for those who don't know me, I'm Dave Townsend, AKA Mr. T. Uh, throughout my time at university, I've been heavily involved in societies in a variety of different ways. My first year, I used to drive minibuses for the, uh, the different societies, taking them from to and from events. In my second year, I progressed to a more active role, being both secretary and social secretary for the War and Society degree program. For three years now, I've been heavily involved in the charity organisation, The Hitch, being both organiser and orchestrator for their very successful date auctions. I'm currently the university's jiu-jitsu captain, leading the team to two national championship wins. I'm also heavily involved in our judo and taekwondo clubs, as well as our Chinese society and our newly reformed Japanese society. I'm going to talk a little bit about the manifesto. First one, basic training. I'd like to introduce more in-depth training days for the society committee members, incorporating leadership, team building, and management training. Basically, what does that mean? Uh, a camping trip in the Gower. Don't be a fool, stay in school. Swansea University has a long, proud history helping the local community which is something I would like societies to get involved with. I'd like to introduce educational workshops with the local, local communities. An example, Drama Society teach, uh, putting on a production of Beth Play for GCSE students, or the Officers Training Corps going down to Cadet Unit and teaching them military skills and drills. Thirdly, tea and toys. I would like to start a review of the nursery unit in order to contribute towards a better university experience for our student parents. As a student parent myself, uh, this is the policy I feel most strongly about. Uh, I believe that by developing a support network, as well as providing social opportunities catered towards their timetable, we can give them a more diverse and hopefully fun time at Swansea. Fourth point, village image. I would like to take a more proactive Sorry, role. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. That's the two minutes over. There you go. Okay, now you've heard from all our candidates, it's time to go on to the questions which are predetermined before today. Uh, these are all submitted anonymously and they are chosen like this. Uh, each one of you will have to answer the question for one minute and it goes in alphabetical order. So the first question is, not all students are aware of where money from the union services is used. How would you change this? So that's not all students are aware of where money from union services is used. How would you change this? Does, of course, go in alphabetical order, so up first we have Tom Gifford. You have one minute. Um, yeah, pretty simply. It's just a matter of communication between the union and students. So, you know, if somebody wants to know uh, where union service money is gone, uh, has gone to, we'll put like a pie chart online or so, you know, anything like that. It's very, very simple. It's all about consultation and how we spend 
the money that you guys give to us should be your decision. It shouldn't be anything to do with somebody sitting in an office deciding what to spend your money on. It's your, it's your, union, it's your union, it's your choice. Thank you. Okay, up next, Owen Harris, you have one minute. Yeah, just show the students where the money is spent, simple as. It's basically putting the accounts online. Yeah, we get the money in the gems and stuff, but we need quarterly accounts out. We've got to put those online, but then again, we've got the problem of promotion. Is Yeah, we put them online, but literally the only people using our website are in this room at the moment. So that's how we've got to make sure that people know about the website and how to get access to the accounts. Thank you, Owen. Next up is Josh Heyman. Josh, you have one minute. I think the most important thing is pointing out the services we have and how that impacts upon people. So showing them that the money you pay to go out on Mondays or whatever, that pays for JCs to be renovated. That pays for Divas to be renovated, pays for us to run the nursery, pays for us to subsidize the cost of some of your food. I think by putting up uh, wall charts demonstrating I'm showing pictures of exactly where the money is going and where we obtained it. I think we can really much better communicate that. Thank you, Josh. Up next, Martha Kiff. Martha, you have one minute. I would try and ensure transparency between the union and students by putting out posters saying, this is where your money's come from, this is what we're spending it on. And also putting it on the website, <coughs> making sure everyone knows how to access it and have a look at where your money's going. Thank you, Martha. Up next, we have Steve Ralph. Steve, you have one minute. Um, I think basically the same as the other candidates. We need to be showing people what we're doing, whether it be online, posters. We need to actually show pictures of what we're doing. We need to show people what the services are, how they work, and who's running them. We need to show the people behind them. Thank you, Steve. Up next, Hamish Simi. Hamish, you have one minute. Yeah, well, it's, it's basically about awareness. Um, I, I know from being a fresher that uh, they literally know nothing. You come to a union, you get lost on campus or something. So we just have to tell them who they can talk to, where they can look to find the information, and uh, continue this throughout the years at Swansea, basically. Um, yeah, and with that, we should facilitate an easier way of answering that question. Thank you. Thank you, Hamish. Dave, Mr. T. Townsend, you have one. T name. for transparency. Boom. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dave. Remember, of course, you have one minute to answer the question, so get as much out as you can. Um, the next question is, what new service or idea would you like to implement if elected? That is, what new service or idea would you like to implement if elected? Uh, now, the first person to answer this will be Owain Harris. It's in my manifesto, T for the travel shop. That's the service, that's how we put it online, because students don't really know it exists. You can get really cheap trips to Amsterdam and Paris. And not only that, if we get that, loads more money to be pumped into other services. So it's a win-win situation either way, then. Thank you, Owen. Next up, Josh Heyman. Josh, you have one minute. I think I've already covered it, really. I'd like to implement a student job fair. I think um, a lot of students struggle to pay um, to live in university. Um, I've been in two jobs, and I'm struggling. So I think that by having a much easier opportunity to get a job when you come to university straight away, I think I'm vastly improved some people's student experiences. Thank you, Josh. Martha Kiff, you're up next. You can pull the microphone down if you want to, Martha. Mine's in my manifesto as well. It's not such a new service, but having another Give It A Go week after um, Freshers' Fair in September so that everybody can try out the societies they want and not have to commit and pay money because it puts people off and everyone should have a chance to join societies. Thank you, Martha. Up next, Steve Ralph. Steve, you have one minute. It's not necessarily a service, but what I want to implement is kind of a forum where people can discuss any issue they have with the society or a service. This comes from every single individual that works for our services and the people who run our committees themselves. Thank you, Steve. Up next, we have Hamish Simi. Hamish, you have one minute. Uh, well, I like food, so um, Bacon Take is possibly my favorite place on campus. You, 
Yeah, I think people have agreed. You can, uh, you can usually find me in there munching on a Cornish pasty or a chicken and bacon sandwich. So what I do is increase the flow of money into food services like the wonderful Fusion Cafe or Bake and Take. And um, yeah, get everyone to eat more. Thank you. Okay, next up is Dave, Mr. T. Townsend. Same question, one minute. Um, quite a serious one, really. Um, I've had lengthy conversations with the girls that run the um, nursery, and they've had to turn away student parents. I think that's just ridiculous. Um, so I'd like to try and sort out this tea and toys thing. So this service, that nursery unit, I think is key. Um, so yeah, I think the support network will really go a long way for the student parents. So that's the service that I'd like to introduce. Okay, and finally, to answer that question, Tom Giffard, you have one minute, Tom. There we are. Um, I'd just like to say, it's not really about introducing a new service, it's more reforming the services that we already offer. We have a uh, fantastic night on our campus, but the queue is massive, and it's outdated. We can improve that. We've got spa stores in Bryn Mill, we've got one on campus, we've got one in the student village. They can be better priced. It needs to be better, and what people often forget is, the most valuable service we offer are our societies, and the more broad societies we've got, the more choices people have, uh, to join societies when they, when they arrive in Swansea, the better. Okay, thank you, Tom. And we move on to our third and final question for the Societies and Services Officer candidates, which is, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing societies in Swansea University? That is, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing societies in Swansea University? First to answer that question will be Josh Heyman. In my opinion, I think the biggest challenge is the lack of space to use and how much clog, uh, how it can get clogged up. Uh, we've got dining room A, we've got divas, which obviously needs improvement, which is in my manifesto. But we also need to make more areas for student activities. Uh, if I was elected, I would look at converting the waterfront space into, sorry, into a student activities area and moving them into a much smaller office because they don't really need the room. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> Obviously, there are rumours that things are going to be moving around in Union House and Fortland House, and any space that's going to be moved, I think, should be maintained for student activities, uh, societies, and sports clubs to use. Okay, thank you, Josh. Martha, you have one minute. I think one of the key issues um, facing societies is that there's not enough communication between societies. We're all part of the same union, but we don't do much stuff together. Um, things like the Multicultural Festival, Nice at Musicals, which is happening in June, is really good fun to work with other societies, and we're all benefiting a lot from it. So I would try and um, make it easier for you to all to work together. Okay, thank you, Martha. Steve, you have one minute. Why am I so short? I think one of the main concerns that have been raised several times over the past year is how certain societies feel left out. This may be disgruntled people, this may just be one or two societies, but as a whole, running a society is incredibly difficult. It takes up a lot of time. You're also doing a degree. I think the main thing is having someone who will listen, and that is how I will keep societies together. Any issue at all, any problem, anything at all, I'd be open to it. Tom has done a fantastic job this year at doing that, and people have actually attacked him for doing so. Uh, I would work, hopefully, as strongly as Tom, work, Tom, Tom has done. Thank you, Steve. Hamish Simi, you have one minute to answer the question. Uh, I think the main problem is getting members, but also retaining members in certain societies. Uh, it's all too often you go to Freshers Fair and join up to some hilarious society, because it, it seems fantastical. And then... You go for a week and then don't go anymore. So it's about increasing awareness about societies and the benefits of joining the societies as part of a fundamental university experience. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Hamish. Dave, you have one minute to answer the question. I think after speaking to a few of the societies, the main key point for them is room allocation. There is no organised structure for room allocation, according to them. So I'd like to try and sort that out. Advertisement is another key one. With one of my manifesto points, stand proud and be loud, we're going to introduce a buy online membership system like Amazon. Click membership, click hoodie, click social. Boom. Enjoy. www.votemrt.co.uk
Thank you, Dave. And up next is Tom Gifford. Tom, you have one minute. Sorry. <laughs> Sit down. He doesn't really look like me either. Um, right. Biggest challenge facing societies, quite frankly, is funding. Uh, there's so many societies I know that can't really afford to do the things that they want to do. And whilst I completely, completely disagree with the rise in student fees, it's given us a great opportunity to get the initiative, get in the back of the university starting the next academic year, and demand more funds off them. Because if we're paying more for our tuition fees, then we should see more uh, filter through into the societies. Thank you, Tom. Go. Oh, I, now you can go up. You have one minute. Sorry, I was too excited to give my answer. Um, two things, spacing and funding. Right, spacing, they're all saying, oh, there's too many students coming in. We're going to have to put lectures at silly o'clock, okay? They're going to look for extra rooms. Dining at room A is going to be under threat. They're going to try and take that away from us, and I'm going to fight against senior management to make sure rooms like that are kept. Also, funding, right? Money doesn't grow on trees these days. We all know money's really short, okay? So in if, in, you could see societies getting low on cash. I would make sure that societies are the last thing to be cut in this union funding ways. Okay, thank you, Owen. And give a big round of applause for your Societies and Services Officer candidates. Okay, once again, we're ahead of schedule, so we're going to have a short break again. Uh, up next, we have the Sports Officer candidates. So if you're a sports